You know, I never in a million years thought I would be making this video, but considering how Steve's character was a complete douchebag in season 1, it's kinda hard to blame me. But man, has he changed. This guy Steve Harrington has shown some of the best character development over a series from then to anyone. He literally went from the most disliked asshole in the show that everybody ruined for him to get his girl back. Speaking about that girl, Nancy. She's played so much of a role in this too. This perfect love triangle couldn't even stand up if it wasn't for her. Both relationships between Steve and Jonathan come off as so real and genuine, and I can't wait to get into all of it. I guess this is the part where I introduce myself, huh? Well, what's up guys? My name is Mayel and welcome to my channel. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. But with all that being said, it's time for another magnifying moment, as this is the forming of a perfect love story. And oh yeah, let's roll that clip. So how did we even get here in the first place? It feels like not too long ago we all wanted Jonathan and Nancy to be the ones who end up together. And I don't know how to explain it, but now in the story more than ever, Steve and Nancy just feel so right. And I think it all has to do with Steve's character arc. As I mentioned before, Steve used to be an asshole, but over many character beats, we as an audience saw Steve grow. We saw his character transform from a jock and an asshole to someone who's been through humility and who's repetitively stood up for what was right, and someone who has put his life on the line for his friends time and time again. And if the writers and directors fully planned this transformation for Steve with the intention of him and Nancy being in game from day one, then they deserve a round of applause because it's not every day that you get a character arc in a live action TV show that feels so real and grounded at the same time. We fully understand time and time again why Steve is changing, and we fully believe this transformation of his character because it happened piece by piece one puzzle piece put together at a time. And through that, we saw Steve go from someone who didn't deserve Nancy to someone who does. One of his biggest mistakes as a character was when he spray painted Nancy's name on a billboard which degraded her as a person. And while this was a fucked up thing to do, he has paid for those mistakes he's made. He's had to watch Nancy be with someone else, even though he still wanted her. But that agony never got in the way of him being there for her and the rest of the group when they needed him the most. He's been there for the group so much that he's gotten the honor of being nicknamed the babysitter. His relationship with Dustin is something that has really helped win us over as an audience as well. From his relationship with Dustin, we got to see how he wasn't just some bad guy. We see how he actually cared about Nancy, and how he wishes things were different. What type is Nancy? Nancy's different. She's different than the other girls. But we also got to see him be kind of a big brother to Dustin. And this helped erase that jock slash asshole memory we had of him. And instead replaced it with the perception of a genuine cool guy. And through the series, Steve has tried to let the history go with Nancy. But he just never could escape it. He and everyone else thought he finally did when Robin came into the scene, but that didn't go as planned for obvious reasons. And if that wasn't enough, the guys had to deal with girls constantly not being able to meet up to Nancy's standards. And that's well because they're just not her. So to put it lightly, the guy Steve Harrington has been on one hell of a redemption arc, and he has more than redeemed himself in it. And that's truly what makes us as an audience root for him, because we understand him and we've seen him struggle. So now more than ever, we just want to see the guy get a win. Maybe a pretty shitty boyfriend, but turns out I'm actually a pretty damn good babysitter. <sighs> so the breakup. Why do I even start with this one? Sitting here thinking about it now, the hardest part about this breakup is that there's really no one to blame. It makes things a lot easier when you can point to one person and say it didn't work because he cheated or because she was a bad person. But here, that's not really the case. And I think that comes down to great writing. Yeah, you could easily point at Steve and say he was jealous and blew everything out of proportion. But what it really came down to is both characters being put into bad situations. Especially on Nancy's side of things. She loses her best friend while getting with the guy she wanted and blames herself with so much guilt. And this guilt is what starts to divide her and Steve. And on Steve's side, he has to repeatedly watch her and Jonathan get closer and closer even though that was never their intentions. And this is what creates such a compelling story, because it's not some stupid drama that divides the two. It's them both having to deal with the crazy situation that they've been thrown into that starts to pull them apart. The tension between them is real because it was built on realistic directions that fit who both Steve and Nancy are as characters. And all this comes to a boiling point when Nancy gets a bit tipsy and lets out all the things she's been feeling. I know you. You're bullshit like we didn't kill barb like we're in love and like we're in love it's bullshit she lets out the guilt of barb dying the guilt she feels from not being able to tell her parents and most importantly how at the moment she just can't love steve 
and I really love the rise choice to not let what Nancy said while she was drunk be the final nail in the coffin for the two. Steve doesn't just cut Nancy off right after the party. No, it's not what she said while she was drunk that ended it, but instead it's what she couldn't say when she was sober that ended things. You don't love me. I was drunk, Steve. I don't remember any of that. So that makes everything that you said, it's what, it's just bullshit too? Yes. Well, then tell me. Tell you what? You love me. And once again, we feel for Steve because the guy was just in love. He genuinely cared for her, and by no fault of his own, it just didn't work out. And for Nancy, it's hard to blame her for distancing herself emotionally from Steve with what happened with Barb. This is what makes the two so interesting because we understand where both characters are coming from, but also understand how it just couldn't work. Well, at least at that point in time. Just take those old records off the shelf. I'd sit and listen to them by myself. A triangle out of hell. Like I said earlier, at one point we were all rooting for Jonathan to be the one who ended up with Nancy. There was obvious tension between the two that got snipped out by Murray in season 2, and I think this back and forth battle that Nancy has been put through not only makes a great storyline, but it also fits her as a character. And that's why these two relationships between Jonathan and Steve feel so real, because they make sense to who each of them are as characters. I also think it's so good how Jonathan and Steve are basically foils for each other. Steve is the cool athletic guy in school who gets any girl he wants, and Jonathan is the complete opposite. He's a shy, not so popular, quote unquote, weird kid. But the one thing they do have in common is a connection to Nancy. And this is where the two start to bleed into each other's realities. They both go through seeing Nancy with the other person, both go through having jealous stages about her, and they both genuinely care about her. It's amazing to see how the writers were able to make Nancy have this love triangle and never seem like someone who was just hopping from guy to guy. Nancy's relationship with Jonathan is believable because it was formed around shared trauma. This type of connection is a real thing that happens all the time in real life. The most common an example would probably have to be when war veterans have a connection with someone they went to battle with. And Nancy and Jonathan both have been through some traumatic shit together. And they bonded through all of that. And when you get such a realistic story like this between characters, it not only makes the story deeper, but it also doesn't put the audience in the odd position of questioning if it's right or not for Nancy to make the decision she's making between Jonathan and Steve because the decision she's making just makes sense. And Steve through all of this gets to grow as well. As I said before, he's been building and building on being a good person. And this love triangle that he's in allows him to do this. He allows himself to take the hit of Jonathan being with Nancy because that's what was right at the time. And he never outright hated either one of them for that. It feels as though he really just wanted Nancy to be happy and that's not to say that he still didn't want to be with Nancy but I think him allowing himself to accept that he just might not be the right guy for her shows how much of a good guy he actually is. And that's what makes this love triangle so good because it's centered around the characters and not the drama. Every character builds from this triangle and they grow in a positive way. And that's why it's not just an intriguing story but also a beautiful one. Jesus, Jesus, what the hell was that? What the hell was Shut that? Shut up! Season 4 really caught me off guard. The season itself is outstanding, but what caught me off guard the most is seeing how much Steve and Nancy are finally perfect for each other. Both characters have grown so much and both have went on great character arts coming into this season. The chemistry between the two is so glaring and it's being hinted at so much this season. So far as to Nancy describing and listing out reasons to why she loves Jonathan, only for Steve to fulfill those characteristics throughout the season that she lists off. He's caring and compassionate. He's so protective over the people that he loves. And he'll never back down from what's right, what's moral. No matter the pressure, no matter the personal cost, that's why I love him. This could even finally be a callback to her not being able to say she loves him back in season two, and now her kind of saying it without even realizing it. The writers even double down on this narrative by having Eddie talk to Steve after they go through the portal and have him tell Steve that she was the first one to jump. She didn't waste a second, not one second that was as unambiguous a sign of true love as these cynical eyes have ever seen the story of these two is just coming together full circle and it has been amazing to see they both complete each other not only through their character arts but in who they are as characters as well steve taking the journey of working to be a good person and choosing to do what's right being a selfish person time and time again and having to experience the humility is what makes him finally deserving of the reward of being happy with Nancy. And Nancy being able to work through the griefs, tragedies, and guilt that was linked to her and Steve is what makes her finally ready to be able to love Steve now. And I just love how this season has shown this through the 
actions of the characters. Steve repetitively having the instinct to protect Nancy, but showing that he has grown and had the humility to realize that he might not always be the perfect guy for the job. And Nancy also having the instincts that show she loves him, even if she hasn't said it yet. The two have had to go on separate roads to develop into the people that they are now, and finally in this season, their paths are beginning to once again merge. And a revolver. Yeah, you almost shot me with that one. You almost deserved that. So wrapping everything up here, the story between Nancy and Steve amazes me. The writers have managed to make a compelling story that not only is intriguing but is relatable and grounding at the same time. I am making this video prior to the release of Volume 2, so as long as nothing happens to Nancy and Steve in the next two episodes, I really believe that they will finally get to finish what they started back in Season 1 and 2. And it really could create a great moment in the series for Nancy to finally be able to say those famous words to Steve. The two truly complete each other as characters and are a clear example of what good relationship storytelling should be in a movie or TV series. And I can't wait to see how it all plays out. You're an idiot, Steve Harrington. You are beautiful, my two brother. Alright, so that's going to wrap up everything for this video. It was a lot of fun making it, and I'm glad to finally put it out. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this from my channel. But yeah, that's going to wrap up everything for this mattifying moment. And until the next one, I'll catch you guys. See ya. Go, hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Through the system, I don't want to be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway.